Today is Monday. It's October the 24th. I am coming to you with today's devotional from Heart of a Shepherd. The title is Don't Threaten Me with Heaven. Well, obviously, the topic of this devotional is going to be about heaven, looking at heaven in an eternal view. And uh, so let's pick it up in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, the latter verses, which actually leads into today's devotional. Now, we are continuing, and as we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 16 and going through to verse 18, we're reminded that this earthly life is temporal. However, the spirit of man springs eternal like after the likeness of our creator. Now, the closing verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 will remind us that our physical bodies fail as they grow old. But we who know Christ as Savior have a hope and a promise of eternal life. Now, the Paul had suffered persecutions and afflictions, he lets us know that he was not without hope. In fact, as you look at verse 16, with confidence in the promises of the Lord, the apostle wrote, we faint not, but though our outward man, our bodies perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Day. What a great promise that is. Look at verse 17. In light of eternity, the troubles Paul suffered were, in his words, our light affliction. But for a moment. In fact, as he considered the rejections that he had suffered, the persecutions, the afflictions, he believed the eternal reward far outweighed that which he experienced. Looking past the temporal things, for we read in verse 18 of chapter 4, the things which are seen. Paul set his focus on the things which are not seen, the things that are eternal. And so as you come to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I've given the topic of this chapter, an eternal home. Now, Paul, after reminding his readers this life, this earthly life, is temporal, he challenged the congregation at Corinth with the hope of a heavenly, eternal home. Look at verse 1 of 2 Corinthians 5. For we know that if our earthly house, again speaking of the body, of this tabernacle, uh, tabernacle being a tent, we know if this body were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I can't help but think about John chapter 14 where the Lord says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, let's consider verse 1 the earthly house of this tabernacle. It was, as I've already noted, an analogy to our physical bodies. The word tabernacle essentially is a tent. It's a temporal dwelling. You might remember the tabernacle of Israel in the wilderness. As they wandered, they would they would pick up the tent, they would move, and they would replant that tent. So it was temporal. Now, the application of that is that while our bodies are being dissolved, that is, growing older and frail, Paul promised God will give his people a glorified body. In fact, we read in verse 1, a building of God, that is, a spiritual body, a house not made with hands. Well, unlike our tabernacle of flesh, this body, God has promised us an eternal in the heavens. No wonder Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now, notice then 2 Corinthians 5, verses 2 through 4. Here, Paul acknowledged, as long as we're clothed in a body of flesh, we will groan being burdened. Burdened with what? Many cares, many sorrows. And nevertheless, we should not sorrow as those who have no hope. We see that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. And so you and I, as physical human beings, We must pass through the veil of this mortal life, and no one is spared death. In fact, we read in verse 4 of chapter 5, mortality might be swallowed up of life, and therein is the hope. The dead who reject Jesus Christ and they reject the knowledge of God, the dead are swallowed up with death and eternal suffering. But we who know Christ are swallowed up with the hope of life eternal. Now, Paul, finding himself in the midst of trials and afflictions, he confessed he longed for the day that he would lay aside his frail body, 
and be clothed in his eternal resurrected body. Now notice then, verses 6 through 8, what I'm describing as confident faith. Now, the apostle found himself in a dilemma as we read verses 6, 7, and 8. On the one hand, he longed for heaven and to be in the presence of the Lord. But on the other, he was at home in the body, and as we read in verse 6, and absent from the Lord. And yet Paul took solace in this, writing, verse 7, We walk by faith and not by sight. You see, the face of persecution, rejection, and threats, Paul assured believers, we are confident. Look at verse 8. We are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now, the word confident there is uh, the idea of hope, courage, or I've defined it as courageous hope. You see, there are some who claim to believe that there is no hope, there is no life after death. The lives of those poor souls are defined by fatalism that believes in soul annihilation. That is, you die and that's it. But there is hope beyond this mortal world. Paul assured believers in verse 8 then to be absent from the body, this body to die and be buried is to be present with the Lord. Believer, death is not the end. It is the beginning in the presence of the Lord. Well, closing thoughts. Paul challenged believers in Corinth to live and labor for the Lord with an eternal focus in verse 9. In verse 10, he warned, though, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone will receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. You see, God's judgment is certain and his justice is sure. Then knowing the promise of God's judgment and the terror of the Lord, he writes in verse 11, it should motivate us to do what? To share the gospel and in verse 11 to persuade men. Paul writes in verse 14 and 15, we are constrained, we are compelled by what? By the love of Christ who died for all and rose again. Well, not only does his death and his resurrection promise eternal life, but it also gives us an assurance of a transformation in this life that is promised and possible only in Christ. And I close with verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that is, he is a believer, the Holy Spirit indwells him. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is transformed. Old things, the old ways, the old passions, the old lusts are passed away. Literally, the idea that are passing away. And behold, all things are becoming new. Believer, don't live the low life when you can choose to live the high life with an eye and a heart and a hope for eternity. God bless you. Thank you for joining me for today's Heart of a Shepherd. Bye-bye.